Okay, so here we go. Um, the assignment is up as well as the reading. Uh, try to have the reading open in a different tab so you can uh, go back and forth between the reading and the assignment to help you kind of answer the questions. Well, let's take a look at some of the questions of the assignment, what they show us in the assignment, uh, and what they're asking from us. So question number one has this map here, and they're going to ask you some different questions based on what this map is showing you. Um, so we're talking about seismicity which is earthquakes like how how many earthquakes do you have if you don't have any earthquakes like texas uh we're gonna have a low seismicity so you can see on this chart uh they don't have like the state or country divisions but the area that texas is in has has no volcanoes here um so so low volcanism as well um and we're not anywhere near a plate boundary so we're really not going to have either one of those things earthquakes or volcanoes um, so you can see on the map, they do have markers for both of these. The, the volcano earthquakes are all triangles. Um, the earthquakes are, are the dark circles. Um, and some of the areas is going to be hard to see both of them because one of them's got to be on top. Uh, but you can kind of see that based on the plates, the earthquakes and volcanoes happen almost exclusively where you have plate boundaries. There are some that happen in the middle of plates, um, but not a lot compared to the overall map. Uh, the vast majority of earthquakes and volcanoes happen right at a plate boundary. And I even have a little bit of a better picture here um, that shows you the different plates and shows you what type of boundary we have. So that's going to help us answer the first question. If you scroll down just a little bit uh actually let's read number one i don't think there's anything to do there but let's go ahead and read it you have learned about the locations of volcanoes and earthquakes uh how they relate to different kinds of plate boundaries use the map below marked with the with the positions of active volcanoes and active earthquakes to answer the following questions about plate boundaries and types so you use this map to help you answer all the questions so number one why are there so many volcanoes and earthquakes around the edge of the pacific so if we look back up here, it's not really marked, but where is the Pacific Ocean? Is it on the left side of the map or the right side of the map? It's on the left side. So here's the United States, and the Pacific Ocean is west of us, so to the left. This is all the Pacific Ocean. Um, and if you look around the edge of the Pacific Ocean, right where the ocean actually meets the land, um, you have a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes. It goes all the way around and comes all the way down South America, um, and then it kind of comes over to the bottom and goes back around. So this, like the Pacific Ocean, the entire Pacific Ocean, uh, is referred to as the Ring of Fire. Um, same name as the Johnny Cash song, but Johnny Cash was talking about a different Ring of Fire. Um, this Ring of Fire is, the fire is, is volcanoes, uh, and the ring is the Pacific Ocean. So that is when they talk about uh, geologically or scientifically the ring of fire that's what they're referring to uh, but the question is why why are all those earthquakes there um, instead of somewhere else yes it's, it's because of the tectonic plates but specifically what type of plate tectonic interaction is around the Pacific um, so around the Pacific Ocean here um, and don't just look at the plate look at the whole ocean what color is the line that is around that edge. Blue. Yeah, it's mostly blue. Almost all of it's blue. You got a little bit of red and green up here, um, which, by the way, is where California is at. That's the the um, the fault I talked about yesterday. What's the fault in California? San yeah, San Andreas Fault. Um, that's that transform fault that's right along the edge here. But almost everywhere else, it's blue. And you got to come over to the other side of the Nazca Plate, but this is the coast of South America, all blue here all blew up through Central America and Mexico uh, and then blew all the way around. So that's the reason we have a lot of volcanoes and earthquakes there um, because that boundary is a convergent boundary. And I have the plate being pushed underneath, the oceanic plate being pushed underneath the continental plate and it's melting and that melt is rising up and forming these volcanoes uh, and the plate boundary is causing the earthquakes. So that's pretty much going to be your answer. Why are there so many volcanoes and earthquakes around the edge of the Pacific? 
because the entire edge of the Pacific Ocean is a convergent plate boundary where oceanic plate is being subducted underneath continental plate. It's a convergent plate boundary, so they're coming together. And your oceanic plate, which is the Pacific plate, and maybe a couple other small ones. Your oceanic plate is being subducted, subducted or pushed under your continental plates. So again, if anybody needs it one more time, why are there so many volcanoes and earthquakes around the edge of the Pacific? Um, because the entire outside of the Pacific Ocean or perimeter or however you want to say it um, is a convergent plate boundary where your oceanic plate is being pushed underneath or subducted underneath your continental plate. Okay, and we kind of talked about this yesterday too, and that map will help us out. California is well known for earthquakes but no volcanoes found in that state. Um, what can you infer about the kind of plate boundary under California? Um, and this doesn't really show us plate boundaries. It just shows us that, you know, your volcanoes are, are the white triangles and they're pretty much everywhere. But when we get to California, the white triangles stop and we pretty much just have earthquakes that happen here until you get down into Mexico and you start to pick up some more volcanoes again. Um, so why does California not have earthquakes? The answer is because that section of California, you don't have any plate that's being pushed underneath and melting. Uh, at California, you have a transform fault. So they're, they're just sliding past each other. Nothing's melting. Nothing's being created. Nothing's being destroyed. Um, and so you have earthquakes from that transform fault that's sliding, but no volcanoes. Uh, generally form at transform faults. So the answer to number two, maybe a little bit more concise, uh, why are there no earthquakes at that kind of plate boundary? Because the transform plate boundary, um, it slides past one another. So there are earthquakes, but there's no volcanoes because nothing's getting melted. There's nothing being destroyed. Not All right, number three. Why is there a line of earthquakes in the center of the Atlantic Ocean? Let's go back up and look at the Atlantic Ocean. So the Pacific's over here. The Atlantic's going to be on the other side, uh, off the eastern side of the United States. Um, right in the middle of the ocean is this huge, long line of earthquakes that happen. Um, now you can see there's a line underneath those earthquakes. So that is a plate boundary. Um, and you do have a couple little volcanoes sprinkled in here and there, um, but there's not a lot of volcanoes underneath there. It's mostly earthquakes. So why are there earthquakes there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Um, a, because it's a plate boundary. Um, so that is your boundary uh, between two parts of oceanic plate that are separating. So if we look back at the map, this is a divergent boundary. It's red all along this line. Um, the red ones are the divergent where they're splitting apart. So those earthquakes are literally that oceanic plate ripping itself apart, like tearing itself apart into two separate pieces. Those are what the earthquakes are coming from. So why is there a line of earthquakes in the center of the Atlantic Ocean? Um, the earthquakes correspond to a divergent boundary where the Atlantic Oceanic Plate is pulling apart. So there's a divergent boundary in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where the Atlantic Oceanic Plate is pulling apart, separating. Which is why the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger. Um, I don't know if we'll do it. I tried to pull it up a second ago, and it looked like the images weren't coming up. 
there's another kind of a little bit math assignment where we can look at how fast the United States is moving. GPS wise, how fast we are moving away from Europe and how fast Europe is moving away from us. Uh, and we can actually do the math and figure out if you play it backwards, how long does it take for them to close back up and touch each other? Um, and that tells you how old the Atlantic Ocean is. Um, so we can actually calculate oh, okay. calculate the age of the Atlantic Ocean um, in another assignment, maybe if, if it works properly on a different day. Okay, so number four, in the center of the Pacific Ocean, there are three volcanoes. How is their origin different from those around the ocean? So let's go back up and take a look at this map. Um, so here's your Pacific Ocean. And right in the middle here, I only see two. Uh, but it says there are three volcanoes. So there's probably a second one underneath one of these. Um, first off, what what's there where those volcanoes are at? Yeah, that's Hawaii. Um, Hawaii's volcanoes, it's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean all by itself. Um, and so those volcanoes correspond to the islands of Hawaii. Uh, and we maybe, if I can find some good pictures, I'll show you all kind of what's going on with Hawaii. Um, are there two different plates interacting there? No, it's like right in the middle of a plate. So these volcanoes are very different from your, your plate edge volcanoes. And that it's not because I have subduction and this plate is melting and kind of coming up to the top. Um, so if there's no melting plate there, what's feeding those volcanoes? Let's see if they talk about them. I'm going to see just real quick if they talk about them in uh, in the reading. Because I don't know if they do. Divergent boundaries. It's not really a boundary. Hold on one second. I'll give you the, the full answer. I want to see if they have a good explanation for it. You know what? Forget this. Let me go to my trusty PowerPoint because I know it's in PowerPoint. So what's happening here with Hawaii? Hawaii. That's Japan. I know it's down here somewhere. Here we go. Hawaii. Nice. So what's happening here in Hawaii is um, we have a different type of melted rock that's coming up to the surface. And what this is called, if you can see it from here, I know the letter's a little small, it's called a hot spot. Um, so this is basically melted material coming up from inside the earth up towards the crust um, that just stays in one spot. It doesn't have anything to do with plate boundaries. Um, it's almost like a lava lamp where the lava lamp has the hot wax that comes up. Um, you have bubbles of molten, molten material that are coming up to the surface and feeding the volcano. Um, this isn't part of the answer, so don't write all this down. Just take a look at it and look at the ages and the sizes of the Hawaiian islands. Um, the biggest island, which is called Hawaii, is the youngest. It's less than a million years old. Um, as you go further down range, the islands just get older and older and older on the rocks. So less than a million years old for the, the big island, which still has active volcanoes on it. Um, then you go to Maui, which is just around a million years old or less. Uh, Molokai is 1.3 to 1.8 million years old. Oahu is 2.2 to 3.3 million years old. And then Kauai is the, the furthest out and the oldest, which is about three, well, actually four to five million years old. Um, and these islands, they're not above sea level, so you can't like actually go and visit them. They go all the way across the Pacific Ocean and change direction and head all the way up towards Russia. Um, the Hawaiian island chain actually goes a really, really, really long way um, as opposed to just the five or six islands that are sticking up uh, that we, we go and visit and are part of the United States. Um, so what's happening here is I have this mantle plume, this hot spot, uh, which is what you can call it in the answer. The hot spot is feeding the volcanoes to the plate, but the plate is constantly moving on top of it. So three to five million years ago, this island was over here on top of the hot spot. But now the plate's moving and it's taking the island away from where the, the magma's coming up from underneath the surface. Um, so the volcanoes over here don't work as well anymore. They're not as active. 
Um, as you get closer and closer to where the hotspot is today, the islands get younger and younger and the volcanoes get more active. Uh, one, I don't know if it's on Hawaii or Maui. Uh, one of these has a volcano that's just been continuously erupting our entire lives. My entire life, your entire life, every day, lava's coming out. They're not like waiting for it to happen. It just happens all the time, every day, uh, continuously erupting volcanoes. So uh, let's go back and get a better answer for this that, that you can actually write down. So number four, in the center of the Pacific Ocean, there are three volcanoes. We only saw two, but we'll trust them. There are three. How is their origin different from those around the ocean? Um, I would put instead of being caused by melting plate, these volcanoes are fed by a hot spot that stays in the same place. That's pretty simple and easy. Instead of being caused by a subducting plate being melted, these volcanoes are fed by a hot spot that stays in the same place. Who did? Uh, instead of being uh, fed, I guess, fed, instead of being created by a, a subducting plate being melted, uh, they are fed by a hot spot. Hot spot's the like technical term for it. A hot spot that stays in the same place. So it's only one little place where the volcanoes happen underneath that plate. Just a little side note, uh, this type of hot spot is what feeds the volcanoes in Yellowstone. If you ever uh, watch cable TV or check out the news every once in a while, um, people will talk about when Yellowstone erupts, it's going to mess up the United States really bad. Um, it's a super volcano. That is also fed by a hot spot. Uh, the only difference is Hawaii is constantly erupting. Uh, the hot spot in Yellowstone hasn't erupted for like millions of years. Uh, and so it's just building up pressure. Uh, one day when it does blow up, it's probably not going to be great. It's not going to like in the United States or anything, but uh, some people are going to have to move for sure. Uh, number five, what evidence is there that the continent of Africa may be splitting apart? Um, so if we go back up to the map. There's not a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes on the continents, um, unless you just look at the edge. Um, there's not a whole lot in the middle. There's a sprinkling here in the United States, which we've had a couple of these happen to us too. Uh, there's, there's some in Asia. Um, but if you look at Africa, they do something a little different than the volcanoes and earthquakes that are, that are on the plate boundaries. These are kind of lining up in this line right here. And you can already see part of Africa has has already left it's broken off and it's moving up towards asia um this is what is now known as the arabian peninsula um so these are a lot of your your arab countries uh i think iran and iraq are both on there uh i think also saudi arabia but this used to be fully connected to africa well i've got a globe here don't let me be wrong but yeah how long have you been um I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's relatively recently because it's still moving. Like uh, hundreds of thousands of years? No, you're talking hundreds of millions of years. Um, and this is actually the area, I did a lot of work on this particular uh, like structure for my master's uh, thesis. So I probably should remember that time frame, uh, but I don't. Uh, so it's you know you're talking hundreds of millions of years but not like anywhere close to, to billions of years um so it's been that way for a while but it is still this little piece right here is still heading up into asia uh and and the the kind of western part of europe and and creating mountains there and kind of smashing into them but when that happened let me see i think it's over here um so we already talked about India. Here's the African part. So you can see the Arabian plate is kind of pulling away, and that's created this ocean here, which was called the Red Sea. Um, it didn't continue to do this, but another part of Africa started to try to pull away. Um, and so this, this uh, eastern coast here started to rip itself apart. Um, you have some lakes and some linear features that have filled in that gap 
uh, that are actually pretty big. But that that is the evidence that you had a rifting event where the country started to pull itself apart, um, but didn't actually uh, continue to do that. And if we go back to the map, uh, the United States has the same thing. Um, over here in like New Mexico, Arizona, um, there's a huge rift where the country, the continent, not really the country because we weren't a country then. Uh, the continent has tried to pull itself apart. Um, and the, the Western states over here tried to come away from the central states. Uh, and you kind of have another same thing here around St. Louis. Uh, I forget exactly what they call this one, but it's it started to rip apart. We got some of the earthquakes. We got some of the volcanoes. Um, but they didn't, they didn't like continue to go until we actually tore into a different continent. So, uh, that's, what's actually happening there. What is the, what evidence is there that the continent of Africa may be splitting apart those earthquakes and volcanoes that are right underneath the Arabian peninsula and the Red Sea. That's exactly how I would put it. Um, what evidence is there that the continent of Africa, uh, may be splitting apart? And I don't believe this is currently still going. I think it's stopped and it's done with. Um, but the line of volcanoes and earthquakes that are south of the Red Sea and the Arabian Peninsula, um, that is your evidence that Africa is attempting to tear itself apart. We did it sometime. Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Tanner. Mr. Stone wants to be Okay, anybody have any questions? Need me to repeat anything? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Or just let me know later and I'll help you out with it too. Huh? I don't like No, I wasn't asking for opinions, just do you have questions? Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. 